الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude and my gratefulness to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for inviting me to one of His houses to be His guest. That I he I feel humbled and honored at the same time. Now, of all the people he chose, he chose me as well to come and spend time in his house, as we refer to it as the house of Allah, and try my best to do what little I can do. I also want to uh, express my thanks to Hazrat Qari Sahib as well for inviting me along, and by extension also the committee members and the trustees. Also would like to uh, already express my thanks to the many people who have been making me feel very welcome. May Allah reward you all. The volunteers, the musallis, literally everybody that I've run into so far. I already feel like I'm in Bradford. <coughs> and take that as a compliment. <laughs> so, there are numerous surahs in the Quran and they all have their own extraordinary aspects. Whether it's Surah Yusuf, in which we find a story, a remarkable story, in virtually its complete form in one Surah. Whether it's Surah Kaf, in which we find an unusual tale of young men taking solitude and khalwa away from the difficulties of the dunya. And then we hear the story of Khidr and Musa and further on we hear about the Dhul Qarnayn and there are numerous surahs like that I can remind you of but one particular surah which will set the scene inshallah for our sort of short and I mean short Fajr sessions is Surah Rahman so in Surah Rahman very unusual like I said all surahs have their specialities and their unusualness their ajab yani their, what makes them ajib and in Surah Rahman, we hear mm-hmm. mentioned 31 times. 31 times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we know that the Quran is of limited words. Uh, it is not something like we find, say, within a hadith where there's thousands and thousands and thousands of ahadith. So for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mention something repeatedly, there has to be significance to it. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this? Again and again. In a way, it seems to insinuate and suggest that mankind and jinn are truly not recognizing the favors of Allah. They are not truly appreciating the ni'mat of Allah. Like Arisa mentioned earlier about a ni'mat is something which you value when it is there because you only truly recognize it when it goes. <clears throat> Whether it's good health, when good health goes, a loved one, a loved one passes away, that's when you rec- recognize that I had something and it's gone. And trying to give a kind of worldly understanding of it just to try to put it into a way that maybe we can connect with it better. There also seems to be some kind of taunting. As Allah SWT is taunting mankind. And whilst going over this surah, it reminded me the only thing when, when I was young, I used to watch a lot of boxing. And I remember Muhammad Ali, before he became Muhammad Ali, he was referred to as Cassius Clay. And he was fighting it, and he converted to Islam and he became Muhammad Ali. And the fighter he was fighting, I think his name was Terrell, he refused to call him Muhammad Ali. He kept calling him Cassius Clay, Cassius Clay. And this angered Muhammad Ali, obviously, because he said, that's not my name anymore, my name is Muhammad Ali. And throughout the fight, he keeps hitting him and says, what's my name? What's my name? What's my name? And he taunts him. And some people saw that as a very bad characteristic of Muhammad Ali because they said he wasn't very sportsman-like. But I'm just trying to give an example of something which we could relate to in which the repetition of something is said in a certain way. So it's very important 
that we take heed from this surah and we try to recognize the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whilst driving here, it was raining. And for some reason, when you're fasting, you, you reflect a little bit more. Normally, you just rain and you just say, oh, you know, put the wipers on faster or whatever. But you just sort of like reflect more. I think it's when your food and water levels are low, your something else wakens up inside of you. You become a little bit of a philosopher. So I was philosophizing as I was coming along my three hour, three and a half hour journey. And I was thinking, if I run the world, if I control the world, how would I bring water to something? You say I was given, you say I, you know, my responsibility is, off you go, you provide water to the world. So I would think, how could I do this? You know, how would I bring water to the world? So obviously, it has to be something which is so huge that it covers everything because you know if the water was brought by hand then you know that would take a long time so it has to be something which is huge now the only two things which are huge is the earth and the heavens so it can only be the earth or the heavens because everything is touching the earth and the heavens covers everything so that's okay i said right i got an idea now it's going to be the earth or the heavens but if it was the earth then how would the tree, for example, control the amount of water it's taking on? In fact, it would damage the tree because it'd be taking on water and more and more and more and it wouldn't be controlling it. So then it has to come from the sky. Because that is, comes rain sometimes and it doesn't rain other times. So now I was philosophizing and thinking of all of this. Then I was thinking of water itself. That when NASA and Elon Musk and all these people are sending things into space, they're always looking for water. They seek water. If they find water, water is such a deep thing that even through electrolysis, you can split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is what we breathe. So if you find water on any planet or on some asteroid or on a moon somewhere, you can split that then to make oxygen, which is what we breathe, and hydrogen, which can be used as fuel. And that's coming from water. So there's life in the water and there's life from the water. Then you think about how water is the same thing and yet it's mixed with soil, which is the same thing. And somehow, you know, one dead thing and another dead thing is mixed together and life comes from it. Trees grow and yet the mango looks different than the apple and the banana looks different than the corn and you know I don't have that much expansive knowledge on plants to give you lists of all the various plants and trees that exist and all that is from water and then Allah SWT makes such a system that that water never escapes so the clouds don't escape into space so the same water you and I are drinking was the same water that was drunk a thousand years ago, which is the same water that was drunk 5,000 years ago, and Allah knows best how long this earth has existed, and which every creature has existed, and drank that same water. So it never escapes. It's the same water being recirculated, recycled again and again. Now I think, you know, if I sat there with my big brain, well, I tell myself I've got a big brain, and if I was to try to work out, I could never ever in a million years come up with that kind of system, come up with that kind of technique. And then something which is water, and you put something there which is vinegar, and you put something there which is diesel. Very similar in viscosity, okay, slightly different in smell. Yet this thing will nourish me. This thing will make me sick, and this thing will probably kill me. So yet there's no diesel everywhere on the planet. Diesel doesn't rain down. Vinegar doesn't rain down. The thing which fits me comes down. And yet the amount of water makes up approximately 1% of the amount of water on the planet. And even though we call this planet Earth, it should actually be called planet water because 70% of the Earth is water. 
So as I carry on driving, I was now sort of near the sort of bottom end of A1 by now because obviously all this I was thinking. And I nearly missed my junction. So I thought maybe I should leave philosophizing until I get to the masjid and at least get there first. But I go back to the ayah. How many of the favors which Allah SWT is giving us forget and to kaziban is to 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 you know think of as falsehood as well if you look at the word kirin to to deny it to not even acknowledge it first we have to try to acknowledge that Allah SWT has given us a ni'mah unfortunately we don't acknowledge it in the first place never mind then appreciate it or try to understand it so all this that we find around us and inshallah hopefully every Fajr session, I will try to bring a topic which is a ni'mah and Allah SWT mentioned it 31 times we only have 9-10 days left so I will try to bring 9-10 examples of how we should be remembering Allah Subhanallah's favours otherwise that taunting that Allah SWT is doing will be followed up with a punishment We're going back to the kind of worldly example. When Allah SWT is taunting, then he's going to follow that up. They're not just empty threats. And if we deny his favors, then every single favor we will be accountable for. And if we express our gratitude for the favors which Allah SWT has given us, then at least I believe we are somewhere in at least being safe from his wrath. And at least that ni'mat will stay with us a little bit longer. It's situations like that we now, you know, we, we now we used to stand you know, shoulder to shoulder, we used to stand next to each other, we used to, you know, take, you know, embrace our elders, you know, all this we used to take for granted. Like it was the norm. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do to make something which is absolutely fundamentally normal become abnormal. You know, we're all sat here with face masks on. You know, well, do you ever dream of that two years ago? No. The thought would never have crossed your mind. But again, because of the favors Allah SWT has given us, and we've not expressed our true gratitude to them, well, then these things will be taken away one by one. And why do we need that to happen to us for us to then reflect? Because if Allah SWT wants us to remember him, then isn't it better we remember him when he gives us something rather than remember him when he takes something away? So it's better that whenever Allah SWT is giving us anything is to do shukr. Say so alhamdulillah. You know that you give us this. You know, even if we sat here all night and said alhamdulillah, we still would not fulfill what Allah SWT has given us. You know, as I said, I'm going to mention various topics inshallah over the next nine, ten days. And there's many, many more. There's many, many more. You know, these are just things which came to my mind. So, let's spend that time that we have, these nine, ten days and beyond, to gain a better understanding of what Allah SWT has given us first. Once we understand what Allah SWT has given us first, then there'll be a sense of appreciation. When there's a sense of appreciation, then we're understanding our true obudiya, our true slavery, as to true how much of a master Allah SWT is. And how great he is. And this in itself to, to, you know, why do we say Allahu Akbar? You know, we say these Arabic words, but what, what are we saying? Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. You know, what do we mean by that? Greatest in what? So we need to kind of ponder and reflect over the language that we use, the verses that we recite, and just pause a little bit. Okay, you don't need to take a three and a half hour drive in the rain, or even a five minute sit down in the masjid. Just to ponder for those minutes and say, Ya Allah, I have been blind and dumb and unappreciative for what you've given me. I recognize now what you've given me. It's like a child who's 17, 18, 19 years old and his father or mother asks him to do something and the child turns and says, what have you ever done for me? What have you ever done for me? And that mother looks at him. It's the same thing here, isn't it? The father looks at him like, what are you talking about? In the same way, how are we any different when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So, jazakum al khair for listening.
Inshallah Ta'ala will carry on with this after each Fajr Salah. After Asr, Inshallah, we have uh, Tafsir uh, for 15-20 minutes, Inshallah. And then we have um, Saturday Zuhur, uh, Q&A, and Sunday Moon Sighting, Inshallah. Ta'ala. We'll be doing something on Moon Sighting because I think it's important that we understand what it means and what it involves, especially with the kind of uh, interest being expressed. Is that my